is when they think about the scale that we're operating, is that actually two-thirds of the operational satellites in orbit are Starlink satellites. And then all of those Starlink satellites came from right here in Redmond. We've currently got a constellation of over 8,000 satellites that are flying around in orbit. So they're working together to fill out the whole surface of the Earth, make sure everywhere can have service. So we have these laser links that are connected between the satellites, so each satellite can pass data from one to the other. That is what allows us to have these hundreds of gigabit links between satellites, and that's what allows us to connect every corner of the Earth to high quality, high speed, low latency internet. When you think about that Starlink that you have at home, the technology that's in there and that's in your antenna is very similar to the antenna that's on the satellite. We use what are called phased array antennas, which is a fancy way of describing an antenna that's made up of many little antennas that work together in order to direct their energy to a specific spot on the ground without a motor. Generally, satellite manufacturing is a very slow process. It takes people weeks or months to build a satellite. At SpaceX, we iterate very fast, and we have learned how to build satellites at the 70 sats a week rate. As we have focused a lot on production rate, we have not forgotten about our satellite reliability, which is critical to our mission. If you look at the whole world and you ask, where is the satellite industry? It's right here in the USA, in Redmond, where the vast majority of satellites being built are being built right here. Starlink is a truly game-changing technology, and it's all supported by the global satellite constellation from this space here in Redmond. And we're really just getting started at the very beginning of what we want to do with Starlink. Now, as we mentioned earlier in the show, one of today's objectives is for SHIP to deploy Starlink simulator satellites that represent the advanced V3 satellites Starship will be launching in the future. And as you can see here, once Starship reaches a nominal orbit, the payload door will slowly begin to open to prepare for deployment. The Starlink satellites will be dispatched relatively quickly, one at a time, very much like a Pez dispenser. They'll be situated in one long stack, taking up as little space as possible, allowing for an efficient deployment sequence. And once a set of Starlinks is deployed, the next set advances and deploys until they are all drifting away from Starship to prepare for their on-orbit life. Each Starlink V3 launch on Starship is planned to add 60 terabits per second of capacity to the Starlink network. That's more than 20 times the capacity added with every V2 mini launch on Falcon 9. So we're talking about a massive increase in performance all around, which will ultimately enable Starlink to serve as the communications backbone of the missions to the moon and to Mars. But for now, we're going to turn it back over to the team at Starbase. Hey, Dan and Amanda. Hey, thanks, Taylor. So quick. Update for everybody. So weather is still the main thing that we're watching. We are currently red on the range, hoping to clear that anvil, anvil rule any moment now. That's really the only thing blocking us at the moment. Vehicle's good, pads ready to go. All of our checkouts have been really smooth today after that repair work that we did this morning after we had to abort out yesterday. So we're looking at the weather. That's the thing we're really paying attention to right now. Meanwhile, prop load is still ongoing. We started loading prop at about T minus 53 minutes, beginning with ship fuel, ship locks, booster fuel, and finally booster locks began loading at about T minus 35. We'll continue loading prop until just about three minutes before liftoff, um, and ship will conclude first, and then 30 seconds later, booster will finish up. Yeah, so bottom line, we're looking great in the vehicle. We're looking really good on the range. We're just really watching that weather. So we're still waiting to hear that that's clear. That's the only thing that could potentially stop us today. Okay, now let's talk about Mars, since everything we do is part of our foundational mission to get to the Red Planet. Each Starship launch is to learn more and more about what's needed to make life multiplanetary and to improve ship to the point where it's eventually taking millions of people to Mars. That's right. We're looking ahead to begin sending the first Starships to Mars next year. 
these initial ones are going to go without humans. They're just going to put minimally viable landers on the surface, land right on the skirt, no legs. This will just help prove we can actually get to Mars, focus on learning just as much as humanly possible, demonstrating what's needed for Mars transit and the ultimate landing. Then during our next window from 2028 to 2029, we'll attempt to land the initial infrastructure and start delivering more equipment while evaluating available resources on the planet. And we'll also have Optimus on board for the ride designed to do the initial heavy lifting. At beyond that, by 2030, 2031, as these windows open up roughly every 26 months, we'll continue to increase the amount of payload we're sending on each ship as we're building out more infrastructure, mining resources, generating propellant for ships to come back from Mars. By 2033, we want to double the amount of payload per ship as we just get closer and closer to, to building a self-sustaining presence on the Red Planet. Yeah, very exciting missions ahead. And these first missions to Mars are going to be crucial to setting up what we'll need for humans to eventually inhabit the planet. And we won't be doing this alone. True. The Italian Space Agency and SpaceX recently signed a first of its kind agreement to carry Italian experiments on the first Starship missions to deliver customer payloads to Mars. These payloads will include a plant growth experiment, a weather, weather monitoring station, and a radiation sensor to gather scientific data during Starship's approximately since six month interplanetary coast phase from Earth to Mars and also on the Martian surface. It's a really exciting vision to make it happen. We're gonna need to launch a whole lot more. We're gonna need a whole lot of people that are gonna come and help us build this. So it makes it really fun for me to come to work. I know you, you build these things. 100%. It's gotta be fun for you. Yep, very exciting. All right. Um, looks like we're about five minutes from tenth, Starship's 10th flight test. Um, range is still looking good. Still have an eye on the weather at the moment. Um, and prop load is also continuing on both stages of Starship. Yeah, I'm pulling it up real quick. So we are just, almost, we're almost closed out on the booster. We're about 90% on fuel, about 90% on locks, just a bit below. So again, we're gonna continue filling for about the next two minutes. Once we're completely done with that, we have about 11 million pounds of liquid propellant on board those two stages of Starship. So a lot of propellant to move really big rockets really fast away from South Texas. So once we get close, all of our ground systems will prepare themselves. They do what's called pushbacks. They'll clear out all of those feed lines, push back into the prop farm and just prepare the area around it. We're doing our final guidance and navigation checks right now. The automated flight safety system is about to get armed. We're just really preparing the vehicle to get ready to go. Um, I'm actually, I'm not sure if we passed it already, but we do a final thrust vector control check out the TVC. We'll wiggle the engines that we use to actually steer the rocket itself. Everybody's favorite topic, if we need to hold, that hold would come at T minus 40 seconds. We can hold if we're still waiting for the weather to clear, which is our big item today, or if any other last minute issues pop up. We'll only hold there if we have an issue. Still waiting to hear confirmation that the weather has cleared. That's the only thing it looks like would hold us today. There's the business end of a super heavy. Now, once we pass that T minus 40 second mark that Dan was talking about, a number of events are going to occur in rapid succession. The ground spin and ignition systems come up to flight pressure and ship will switch over to internal power. After that, the quick disconnect arm lockout is removed in preparation for retraction, which occurs shortly after T0. And once we pass that T minus 40 second mark, we do still have the ability to then recycle the count under certain conditions back to T minus 40 seconds and hold there to assess what happened and if we can proceed again back to liftoff. Yeah, we, we hope that doesn't happen, but it has previously. I promise not to psych anybody this time. Uh, we do have some kind of points of no return. Once the water starts flowing out of that flame deflector under the launch mount, that happens just a little after T minus 10 seconds. If that triggers and then we hit a hold, that would be a scrub for the day. We have to refill the water tanks, can't turn it off, got to refill prop, all that stuff. So that's kind of the major watch item you'll see a big splash under the launch mount and if we see that go and then you hear a hole that would mean that we're done for the day but not and 
Yeah, I, I didn't disappear. Sorry, everybody. Listening in as the flight director for today is going through some of the final checks. We are still red on the range for weather. We are closing out prop load right now, though. Yeah, as we wait and hear what's going on, we can just quickly review some of the test objectives for today. Um, on the booster side, we're, of course, hoping for all 33 of those Raptor engines to power our ascent ahead of hot staging. And once that stage separation occurs, booster will perform that directional flip before the boost back burn. One of the interesting experiments we're doing today is upon our landing burn, which typically ends with those three center engines lit. We're going to be intentionally shutting one of those off and instead lighting one from the middle 10 ring. And this is just to kind of give us an idea of what it would look like if we ever had an engine out scenario. Yeah, using, using our time to really push the envelope. And so at this point, we are fully closed out on our prop load. Coming up on a minute and 20, we are still red on the range for weather. So at this rate, looking likely, we will hold it T minus 40 to see if we can clear that anvil cloud rule. That's the one blocker we currently have to a launch today. All right, and we did just get confirmation, so we are expecting to hold at T minus 40. We are still red on the range for weather. So look for the clock to pause in just a couple seconds. And pause. So we'll hang out here for a couple of minutes. We do have until the end of the window. We won't have 30 minutes of hold time to hang out as we can't, we're essentially not replenishing prop on the vehicle at this point, so we have to keep a close eye on things like temperatures inside the tanks. We can only hold for so many minutes before things start to warm up. Surprise, it's hot in South Texas. <laughs> uh, so. Yeah, while we're holding here at, at T minus 40 seconds, we reviewed our test objectives for booster, but why don't we chat ship for a second? Um, after stage separation, ship will continue onwards up through its ascent to the planned suborbital trajectory. Um, once it reaches there, we'll undergo SECO, or where the second stage shuts off its engines. We're hoping to deploy eight uh, dummy satellites today, which are modeled after Starlink V3. We're also planning to attempt a in-orbit in burn, so we'll relight one of those Raptor engines while in space, and that will occur ahead of re-entry, where we'll also be testing multiple experiments, including missing tiles, metallic tiles, and um, intentionally loading those vehicles' flaps. And then hopefully we'll conclude today's test flight with a soft splash down in the Indian Ocean. Yeah, definitely want to see a ship on the other side of the planet today. Uh, we did just get a quick update. So the range is fully green. Weather is still red. So we are still tracking a detached anvil rule, which essentially there's an anvil cloud that's too close to our launch site, and it needs to move further away. Until it moves further away, we can't lift off. So we are expecting an update in a couple of seconds, potentially. Again, we can hang out here for several minutes. We're not actively replenishing prop and getting an update now. And we're getting a weather update right now. And team's looking at it. Again, we're just tracking this anvil rule still. It's our only blocker today. Range is green, vehicle is green. Weather is currently red. All right, and sad, vo sad voice coming in. Uh, we did just hear that we are still gonna be red. So at this point, we are essentially transitioning this to be a wet dress. So wet dress is when we fully load prop on board the rocket. Um, so we are gonna see the clock probably start up again. But once they get down to 10 seconds, they're gonna, going to abort out, and then we will be done for the day. So, sad news, not going to launch today. Weather got in our way, but you can only control so much. Can't always control the weather.
can't control the weather. I wish we could control the weather. We're not there yet. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that be nice? Uh, so we are seeing the clock rolling, but again, we're going to get down to T minus 10 seconds and we're going to see that kick back out. And then we're going to start offloading all of the propellant that's on board the rocket today. So if you are just tuning in, yeah, it's not going. There it goes back to T minus 40. So again, we essentially turned today into a wet dress. So today still end up, ended up being a test. Still uh, learning something as always. Yeah, still learning something. We were able to to fix the issue that kind of bit us yesterday we where we had a, a leaky hose that was feeding liquid oxygen into the ship. Uh, but we were able to fix that, but weather got us today. So no launch today. Uh, we do have a phenomenal logistics team, though, so we should hopefully be able to replenish prop everything. We don't have to refill all the water tanks because we didn't fire off the deflector. Uh, but we'll have to reload the prop. So uh, very good chance that we can try again tomorrow. We'll obviously update everybody uh, online. And yeah, man, sorry, we couldn't couldn't go today. Don't worry, we'll, we'll, we'll probably go tomorrow. Uh, uh, yeah, thank you all for joining us today. And we hope to see you when we do yes. uh, go for launch. So obviously follow our account on X at SpaceX. We'll share information as soon as it comes available. We'll also be updating the web at SpaceX.com. Uh, so thanks for joining us today. Exciting countdown. Weren't able to get off the ground, but we'll give it another shot tomorrow. Thanks, everybody.